I was at the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford and I knew that he'd been admitted earlier in the day and I was actually on call that night and I was busy working away on the ward computer in the evening and it was quite late in the evening and I noticed that I became aware this figure sort of wandered down the past the, me along the ward and then came back again a few minutes later and then he seemed to come past three or four times a bit slower each time until eventually he stopped and I heard this voice saying what are you doing and I looked up and there was this tall massive man with sticking out ears and twinkly eyes and uh, peering down at me and um, uh, it was almost like looking up at the BFG but of course it wasn't the BFG it was Roald Dahl himself and we got chatting about the work I was doing. I was writing up some research on malaria and he'd had malaria among many other illnesses and he was fascinated by medicine. And so we spent the rest of that night talking and every third night when I was on call in the hospital, we would talk and talk and uh, got to know each other very well. Uh, Roald Dahl was fascinated by medicine and he always said if he wasn't a writer, he would have loved to have been a doctor himself. And so uh, we chatted about all sorts of medical things. And in fact, in his life, uh, he did some amazing medical things. He actually invented a new neurosurgical device to treat water on the brain, to treat hydrocephalus. And he did this because his son had hydrocephalus and the treatments then weren't very good. The, the valve and the, and the shunt that was used kept blocking. So he invented a new one and um, it was used around the world. Thousands of children benefited from this valve, which he created with a neurosurgeon and a, a toy maker. So at the Royal, we have the Roald Dahl Centre for, it's for, for people with blood disorders, haematology problems. And so he had, um, when, when he died, his wife, Lissy, set up the charities and they supported a few different things, uh, children's neurological problems, but also um, because Roald actually died of a blood disorder, he, he died of a type of leukemia, um, one, of the, one of the things they wanted to support back then was, was for people with blood disorders. So that's why the Roald Dahl Centre was set up. In fact, the charity lives on. It's called Roald Dahl's Marvellous Children's Charity. And that's one of six charities which are going to benefit from all the author proceeds of my book. So the author proceeds are being divided among the Dahl Charity, the Stroke Association, the Encephalitis Society, because one of Dahl's children actually died from measles encephalitis. That's inflammation and swelling of the brain. And then Shine, which is the organisation for spina bifida and hydrocephalus, as well as a couple of local charities, the Walton Neurocentre and the University of Liverpool.